Russell, what has been the situation with your group and with authorities here at Wounded Knee? Situation here is they're still talking about how they can get us into prison without killing us. Uh, that's that's all the negotiations that have gone on so far. We've had, of course, promise after promise by the Justice Department that supplies and people, supplies would be let in, which hasn't happened. Those promises have been broken, which is par for the course. Also, that people would not be arrested, you know, arbitrarily and indiscriminately, and yet that continues to go on. Uh, so consequently, we have broken off negotiations until such time as they can deal with our treaty rights. What about the reports of the exchanges of gunfire that we hear about here at the Siege of Wounded Knee? That happens every night. The federal government, of course, claims we fire first, which is which that claim is asinine. You know, it's beyond belief. Our sentries along our borders are given 10 rounds of ammunition apiece each night because we haven't that much ammunition. And besides that, it would be foolhardy, to say the least, for us to attempt to militarily engage the most powerful country militarily uh, in the history of mankind. They haven't allowed us to bring them down the federally controlled highway. Uh, We've asked for medicines and things, and they've, uh, they've, you know, let us bring in stuff like aspirin and, you know, and band-aids, you know, and said, okay, well, we let them have medical supplies. We ask for food for our people, you know, like, and they give, you know, like, uh, they say, well, here, we'll give you five pounds of flour today and uh, maybe five pounds of beans tomorrow, you know, if you're lucky, if you're still there, and, you know, like, uh, spread that out among your people, man, and it just don't work out. You don't have a weapon with you right now. Do you normally carry a weapon? Yes, when I'm on duty. Have you fired at the federal people before? Uh, I can't answer that question. I have been fired upon by the federal people several times. I was next to the medic that got shot. And things like this, you know, like, you know, are common. You know, it happens every night. Do you feel there's much greater danger of injury, possibly death to someone in these incidents as the siege continues. Well, last night, for example, this 30 caliber shell right here ricocheted within the Church of God, where we keep a lot of the women and children, uh, where they sleep at night. 30 caliber weapon. Right here. This is an M16 that was dug out of a wall of, of, of the other church, the little white church down here. And here's a 32 expended slug that uh, was found near the church. So, uh, yes, I definitely believe there's going to be injury. We've had three woundings already. One medic and two Oglala Sioux have been uh, wounded. Do you think the government is definitely trying to provoke an incident of gunfire and bloodshed here on this in this area? Oh, yes, that's part of the game. Also, part of the game is to uh, expend our ammunition. You know, they fire in these 30 caliber slugs, anti-personnel weapons that uh, are illegal according to the Geneva Convention. It's 30 caliber. It's supposed to be used for aircraft. Said they're using it. They're using it as anti-personnel. These, uh, also, if we, you know, happen to, in exchange, in the exchange of gunfire, kill a federal officer, that would give them all the excuse they need to just come in and massacre us. So I know that they had, there's a plan behind their fire. So the Indians here aren't shooting first? Like I said, it would be foolhardy. And it's even ludicrous to suggest that we would. Uh, you know, we have a certain amount of intelligence. And when you see armored personnel carriers surrounding you, and men with M16 and all automatic weapons and helicopters, uh, <laughs> that'd be a form of suicide. Now, we're willing to die. You know, we're not afraid of death, but we don't want to be killed. You know, we would rather have our treaty rights recognized. Federal grand juries in Sioux Falls have returned some 54 indictments against the occupation forces here at Wounded Knee, and in late April or early April, more indictments may be coming down. Do you fear the federal recourse for your actions here? According to our treaty rights, they haven't any business. Yeah. Uh, that's like indicting... Uh, Arabs 
in Egypt because they're they're involved with Israel. You know, we're another country. They haven't any jurisdiction over us. But you don't fear going to court. I believe you're quoted in, as saying in one of the magazines, in one of the weekly magazines, give us our day in court. Would you like that day in court? Personally, I only speak for myself. If everyone else would, uh, would be given amnesty, I guess is the word, I'd be more than willing to go to court. I believe that would be an excellent forum. So to settle the matter now, you would be willing to go to court and explain your side of the story or take whatever federal action would be put against you? Right, provided I had enough of the bond money or that half a million or so they're going to slap on me. How do you react to concern or criticism, I guess, by some on the people that actually AIM is more interested in AIM advancement than the welfare of the Indian themselves, or in individual AIM advancement. AIM stands for the American Indian Movement. It does not state a specific tribe or a specific group of people. We, we represent a fact of Indian life. A fa in every strata of Indian society, we have AIM membership. We represent a fact of Indian life. The only forum we have available to us for our grievances is the media. And we try to use that media. Yes, we are for the advancement of the American Indian movement in, insofar as ridding ourselves of corrupt tribal government, the uh, corrupt and lethargic Bureau of Indian Affairs, and it's cumbersome bureaucracy and the fact that we were and first and foremost to get our treaties back in the forefront of negotiations with the United States of America. All 371 that are ratified by the Congress of the United States and also the unratified treaties, which is the next step. There is criticism from the press that you have prolonged the occupation here to gain more publicity. <laughs> We've brought along the, the occupation here because of our treaty rights and our lives. And as far as uh, publicity goes, yes, the American Indian, the American Indian, needs media cooperation for a redress of our grievances. We do not have 20 million people that can effectively lobby in Washington, D.C. We do not have uh, corporations or any kind of monetary power whatsoever or influence. Look what happened to the Alaska Natives, and they own the oil. They, they're getting less than 1% of what's going to come out of their, their, their oil. So you see, we do need media coverage on the, for a redress of our grievances. Just how, Go ahead, just how widespread do you think your, your support is among the American Indians across the nation? Almost total. And it even reaches into uh, almost every foreign country in the world, our support. We received over 30 telegrams yesterday via uh, Rapid City. I know we have much more, you know, but we only got 30 of them that are from, from 30 different uh, foreign countries expressing their support. Getting back to the media, do you feel the media coverage of Wounded Knee has been fair? Or how would you evaluate the coverage of Wounded Knee at this stage? Initially, uh, yes, I, th I, I thought the uh, media coverage was more than fair. However, when the primary issue of our existence as Indian people, as sovereign Indian people, which is based on our treaties, this is not getting out. And the fact that, that, that the government it has suspended the Constitution of the United States all the way to the California-Nevada border, the Illinois border, the New York State border, where they're arresting people because they're just, they're just traveling to Wounded Knee. And they're, they're trumped up charges. The whole suspension of our civil liberties as Indian people across the nation have been suspended. Why the lack of understanding do you feel about the treaty question? The United States government and its people have effectively isolated Indian people and filed away our treaties for over a century and more. Consequently, the United States government neither has an, they have an, any explanation if they massacre us based on our treaty rights, 
and have any a answers for us if they negotiate it over our treaty rights. Right now, I, I imagine that in Washington, D.C., there's a heck of a lot of bureaucrats <coughs> and White House personnel researching Indian treaties. Now, until those treaty questions are resolved, you're going to have much more, many more wounded knees around this country. And we don't want to see that, because that involves Indian lives. The taking away of Indian lives, the threat of imprisonment of Indian people. We don't want to see any more wounded knees. So consequently, we need our treaty rights answered to. Why did wounded knee? Why did wounded knee happen now? Why not two years ago or three years ago? Or why not 1976, when white America has the gall to attempt to celebrate their uh, manifest destiny, birthday celebration? Why did it happen now? That you would have to ask our spiritual leaders. Uh, it just happened. 